let's use the BIOS of our law to get the B field, the B of a long straight wire. I'm sorry, a long straight current. We're always going to use the word current rather than wire. So wire doesn't have to carry a current, but a current has to flow in a wire, we could say. So, BIOS far. So let's draw it first. Uh, there's a wire. Looks suspiciously like just two lines, but it is a wire with current flowing down it like that. And we want to find the B field at some point P, a distance at a specific distance from the wire, say A. So if we go to here, there's A. Okay, so we apply the bios savoir law. Let's go ahead and just write that differential from the bios savoir law. DB, the little differential field element that's created by a little DS is really what bios savoir tells us in this case. That's the little DB. And you can imagine we're going to sum it up. Okay. All right, so db is mu naught over 4 pi times i times ds crossed with r hat over r squared. Okay. So now we've got to deal with ds cross r hat. Okay. What in the heck is that? Well, let's see. So here's the vector ds. The vector r hat, remember we think of a vector r from the ds to the point p, so there's r, so therefore that is r hat. Okay. So if you want that cross product, you just, well, you say ds cross r hat is the magnitude of one ds times the magnitude of the other, which is just one, times the sine of the angle between them. Well, the angle between ds and r hat is just going to be this angle of this right triangle. And you can see that'll be true anywhere we put ds along the wire. It's always going to make a right triangle. That angle will always be theta, so sine of theta. Okay, if we plug that in, then we get db. Ooh. Is mu naught i over 4 pi, and then I want to write it the same way we have ds sine theta over r squared. And now we need a direction. Okay, this is a vector, and this clearly is a vector with some direction, it's a cross product. Now this is a vector, but this is really just the magnitude of ds cross r. We don't have the vector part. Okay, so to do this problem, you almost always want to set up a coordinate system. So let's set up a coordinate system. Um, there's the x direction, we'll say, is along the wire, along ds. There's the y, and x cross y is out, so this z must be out of the board. Okay? So our ds cross r sticks out of the board. So there must be a k hat on here. And therefore, there must also be a k hat on there. So that is our db, and it's a vector like it should be. So now we want to integrate along the wire. The reason you set up a differential element is you're going to add them all up on whatever physical object you're working with. So here ds is aligned with the x-axis. So the little ds's basically become dx's. So we can pretty much just write it um, like that. We could say that db is mu naught i over 4 pi times dx times the sine of theta. But remember also, if you're going to do this integral, you got to get everything that varies in terms of x. You can't have something that's changing, like theta or r, written in terms of theta and r. If you're going to integrate with respect to dx, you got to write everything with respect to dx. These were just constants. They got to stay how they are. So let's look at sine theta and say, what is it? Well, let's see. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is a over, I'm looking, a 
A over this hypotenuse. Uh, this hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus a squared, right? Pythagorean theorem. So that would put the square root of a squared plus x squared, like that. So there's dx times sine theta. You've got to be a little bit careful. Actually, this is going to a negative x value. So technically, on some problems, it's important that you put negative x in here, but it's going to get squared, so negative doesn't matter. And just to save room, I don't want to write negative x squared. Um, let's see. So that takes care of those two. And then we have an r squared in the bottom here. r, remember, is really just the magnitude of the r vector. It's really this distance here to here. Well, we just did the Pythagorean theorem, <coughs> but we can do it again. 1 over the square root of a squared plus x squared, but then it's squared like that. So you have an a squared plus x squared. Okay, And it's in the k hat direction. So there's your integral. And you can see quickly one thing you can do is combine these two. It's really the integral of mu naught i a over 4 pi dx over a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves once we put it together. So next board, we'll go through and finish the integral.